Well, welcome everybody. Thank you for showing up for the brief today. Uh, my topic today is going to be on personal learning environments and more particularly a focus in on data analytics where we're looking to explore the power of the big uh, data aspects that are happening in the other market spaces, why not in the learning spaces. Now my topic today is going to focus on three aspects. One is personal learning environments. What are they? It's a new, I would say, somewhat new buzzword that's being used uh, in today's spaces. We're going to take a look, a very light look at learning and data analytics and what art of the possible. So I'm, a, I'm actually looking for some collaborative back and forth sharings of uh, some discussions. So hopefully you guys will partake in that. So personal learning environments, what are they? It's a good question. Uh, in our research, we started looking around. There's the terms used, personal learning environments, personal learning uh, assistants, uh, all kinds of terms being used. I found this one resource to be very useful where they collected these multiple different definitions. And basically, they're a bunch of diagrams trying to describe what a, a personal learning environment is from various aspects. A lot of them are university-based researches. Some of them are in industry-based uh, products. But uh, it's a good resource so you can get a taste or flavor of what people are talking about when they say personal learning environments. Uh, during our research, we, we kind of distilled it down to three aspects. One being that the learner is in complete control. And two, that it's personalized based on facets that stimulate that learning process. And the third one is it's driven by intelligent use of data or data analytics. The Venn diagram that I've drawn here uh, kind of shows that and what we're trying to uh, look at in our research is these three pillars let's say in the uh, personal learning what we call an ecosystem and the intersection of those uh, Venn diagrams we believe the technology that and, and that, that are like personal learning assistants or agents uh, could be the intersection point to help drive uh, these learning environments to be very personal so uh, here's the first part of my collaborative brainstorming. Uh, what makes a learning system personal and engaging? Can we determine a learner's preference of learning? I know that's a hotly debatable topic. Uh, many research papers have been written that say that there are no, there's no distinction, there's really no learning styles, but there possibly are preferences. So I'm challenging a little bit this notion that there's not learning styles, but maybe there's a preference, the way people like to learn. Um, and if so, how? And then thirdly, what are some of the ways we can personalize learning experiences? These are some of the questions we're, we're curious about, viewpoints from uh, the community. Anyways, but these are some of the things we're looking at when we talk about really personalized experience. Okay, so I want to move on to data analytics. Um, as you know, data is everywhere. It's ubiquitous. What I call our digital footprint is growing daily, weekly, every website we go to, every blog we read, every forum post we make, any Twitter post we make, our footprint is growing. We need to find ways to take advantage of that. Many sectors already are. The, the marketing and finance and retail industries are taking advantage of all this rich data about their customers and using it to their advantage to help market their products, help make financial decisions, or even help retail sales. So a lot of this data is out there. Now how do we, what do we do with this data? Well. These are the five typical steps in a data analysis model. First of all, you've got to obtain that data. Where is the data coming from? Where can you gather this data? How do you go about gathering the data? Once you gather that data, you probably have to scrub it, clean it up, make it easy for your algorithms to manipulate, to work on. After you get it to a state where you're, you can actually do something, you start to explore. You look for patterns. You start to realize, what's this data telling me? What's the story telling me? Then after you that, those patterns could then be turned into models where you can start to look at models across many different aspects. Maybe it's demographics, maybe it's a, a style of learning, whatever. And then there's the interpretation or the actionable, I like to call the actionable step that you take based on that model or that pattern. What can you do? So this is very key. This is what we're focused on when we talk about analytics and learning analytics. Now, as you, I said earlier, the marketing, finance, retail, et cetera, they're already using big data. They're, they're looking at, they're, they're plowing through terabytes of data to help make decisions and the decision architectures. From a learning and education side, we're starting to see some uh, work looking at data analytics and learning analytics. Here's four programs I wanted to talk about briefly that I thought are, are pretty unique. The Purdue Signals program uh, is a university-wide uh, program that's being run out of Purdue, obviously, and what they're doing is they're, they're 
connected to their learning management system, and anyone who takes an online course, they're able to track the data that's collected during those instances, and they're also even looking at data outside of that typical learning management space, and they're helping it from a predictive and warning per per perspective, that hence the signals. So uh, if an instructor is evaluating their students over a time, they might see their warning level change from maybe green to yellow or orange or red or something like that, so they can start taking actual steps to help that, maybe coach that learner or that student into a space they need to be. Uh, the Social Network's Adapting Pedagogical Practice is a very interesting program where they're using it to analyze uh, like forum posts and forum chats and networks. So you can start to see if you if you have a pro if you're running a program where you have students collaborating on a forum or Facebook or Twitter like that, you can run this type of uh, software to analyze the network patterns and figure out who's saying the most. On, on these facilities and maybe they're a, more of a leader in your in your classroom or whatever and maybe you can take that take that advantage of that and use that as an exemplar for maybe some other characteristics in that class. Uh, Newton is a piece of software from industry that's focused on LSAT, uh, GSAT and SAT uh, to help students become more proficient at passing those exams. So they, pre they provide uh, software that allows you to take the exams uh, test the exams and they, they, they'll take that data and they'll help you coach you through some of the other exams so they're they're using like live test data to help you get prepared for those types of tests. The Khan Academy is interesting. The Khan Academy has produced thousands of videos, vignettes of how to do uh, some very simple things to some very complex things. So for example, it might be K through 12 and maybe you're teaching single digit edition. They have these videos out there, you, students can log on, they can participate in these videos. They have ways you can set up uh, exams with these videos and again they're tracking a ton of data to help recommend, okay you've taken single digit edition, now we recommend you moving on to double or triple digit edition. So they're an analyzing those patterns behind the scenes and results and making recommendations for other videos to partake in. So for just four examples in the learning space, there's others out there. So learning analytics, this is probably one of the best definitions I've found out there and uh, I've, I've done some uh, informal work, let's say, which, uh, in, in looking at these definitions. And George Siemens is a professor at the University of Athabasca in Canada and he runs a knowledge analytics conference. Last year was the first year and there's one coming up this year. And he also runs what they uh, call uh, MOOCs, or Massively Open Online Courses. And what a MOOC is, is a, a newer concept that is um, anyone can take, it's free to take, every resource, every uh, your time, everything is free, no, you pay for nothing. And I've been in a couple of these now, and I've had upwards to working with five, six hundred different people online in one of these MOOCs. And there was one that was focused on learning and knowledge analytics. And he's turned that MOOC into a, now a conference. And this, this coming year will be its second annual conference. But his definition I have here is probably one of the best I, I could find about what is learning analytics. And you know, as it states there, it's a use of intelligent data, learner-produced data, and analysis models discover information and social connects and predict to advise and predict learning. Um, the power of that, as you can see, is, is endless. And if you can capture that data and start making those decisions to help, you can use it for many things. Prediction. Is that learner going to excel or they're not going to excel? Can you catch it early and maybe direct them a different path? Uh, course of action corrections. Advanced progress measurements. Uh, maybe there's additional data that we can collect that you're not thinking about. Um, and then capturing maybe inside even some informal learning stuff. Are they out there using Facebook and posting about their courses? Are they on forums discussing their courses? Are they using Twitter? These kind of these informal mechanisms. How can we take advantage of that data? And remember earlier I talked about the, the, the data analytics process model. You're still going to have to hit all four of those or all five of those process steps in order to take advantage of this data. Um, I certainly, this conference last year was online and you could view it online. Uh, it, the the uh, briefings are, are just getting ready to be put out to ACM from last year's conference so you can get the briefings. But it was definitely a learning experience to sit through and see what everyone's doing from a learning and, and, and knowledge analytics perspective. Uh, very interesting conference, definitely recommend it. Hope to get there in April. Um, so, what, I mean, so, Brief overview of learning analytics, same thing, I'll throw that question out there. What are some of the uses of learning data? What kinds of data can you be imagined being analyzed? And thirdly, what are some of the barriers that we might have to overcome? Tom, as we were talking earlier, you were saying things of the fact of, 
you know, how can we capture data from an after action review uh, from, from the training to be used in an after action review. And I think what's critical to that is we have to understand what's the art of the possible so that during the design of that exercise or that content, you can start thinking about those things that you might be able to track while they're inside the learning and then take advantage of in the after action. Things you might not be tracking right now. So I think you have to, part of my answer to your question might be that, well, it, you have to start thinking maybe outside the box a little bit because there is a ton, of, you could track a ton of data when those learners go through various training courses. And yeah, I would also think about, I recommend thinking about what happens outside of that setting. Do these students or these people that go through this training, do they leave the classroom or the online system and talk about it with their peers offline somewhere? And can you use that data somehow? Can you capture, for example, Twitter posts or Facebook posts, or maybe you have a forum or discussion board set up that you can monitor, and maybe you can use a little bit of semantic analysis to analyze the types of messages that are going on after, after the class. But I think the challenge is gonna be how to design the content, how do we design this stuff so that we can start capturing and using this data and is important. Um, it's unbelievable about the amount of data, if you do it right, that could be collected. I mean, you can talk about time spent, simple things like time spent in an exercise. Uh, then you gotta break that down further because one learner might be in a, a, a a setting for a longer period of time because they're distracted, let's say. But another one might be a longer period of time because they, maybe there's some sort of uh, barrier they're coming across. They don't understand a concept. So you really got to look and analyze why that time was in that course was spent. So it, it's, it's a different mindset. I think we have to start training ourselves as, as designers of content and training of what we can take and what can we look for. What are those signals we want to track and monitor? So four, t four key takeaways. Personalization is everywhere. We see, I mean, I go to Google, my searches are unbelievably accurate when I look for them anymore. I go to Amazon, I'm getting recommended books that I end up buying because they are related to what I just read. So it's everywhere. We need to find ways to take advantage of that in the learning space. Data analytics, it's quickly, quickly emerging. Uh, there are several conferences now that exist today. I can think of three or four of them that didn't exist last year, all around data analytics. So it's becoming a huge, huge, even um, an unbelievable uh, market sector. We gotta find ways to leverage that in the learning space. The possibilities are endless with using learning analytics. Uh, we could sit around the table and talk different things about how we can track learners, what can we do with that data, et cetera. We know there's still challenges. This is an emerging field, so we need to understand what those challenges are early so that we can put break down those barriers, look for ways to overcome those barriers, whatever it may be. Uh, security, for example, is gonna be a big one. You know, how can I access this system? Uh, and is it really my data? Do I own that na data? Is it a personal data thing or is it an organizational data thing? So there's all kind of maybe policy and, and security requirements you have to look through. So there are still some challenges, but we need to continue to look at those. So in conclusion, I'd like to thank everyone for sitting through my little brief here. Uh, I do invite anyone to stick around and talk. We are looking for opportunities to partner, take some of the stuff we talked about here further, uh, look for some more use cases, uh, particularly in these two spaces, learning and knowledge analytics and personal learning environments. Uh, look on our website. We're going to be posting this briefing and other papers about this soon to come. So thank you for your time and any questions, let me know.